Hey folks, Chris Vandeviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today I want to talk about what apparently is a very controversial topic right now for Logic users. I had no idea there was so much conversation going on about this particular subject, but I've received a lot of emails over the last couple of weeks. Folks asking me, hey Chris, can you give some insight, some feedback? And it turns out it's all about pre-fader metering. What is it? When's the right time to use it? Why are people suggesting it? And my thoughts on the subject. So I want to dig into this real quick. You don't have to agree with me. Just, you know, it's my perspective. So number one, what is pre-fader metering? Well, it should be of no surprise to anyone that there are meters on all the tracks in your session in a logic project, right? We have these meters here and they tell us how loud our tracks are at any given moment. This can be very helpful for not clipping your meters or anything else. So I've got a drummer track here and I'm going to solo that drummer track. And the one thing that I think some folks who appreciate pre-fader metering, the thing that they don't like about Logic's default metering mode is that if I adjust the fader, this meter is going to reflect those adjustments. So if I pull the fader down, the meter will get quieter or it'll demonstrate that the signal is quieter. If I bump it up, it'll demonstrate that the signal has gotten louder. Let's just take a listen and watch. So as you can see, as I drive the volume down or up, the meter reflects this change in volume, which honestly is as, as much as I would expect from the meters. I, I really appreciate that about them. But some folks are suggesting that pre-fader metering is the better option. Instead of the meter telling us how loud or quiet the track is based on the fader movements, it tells us how loud or quiet the track is based on everything before the fader, which means the input subsequent plugins on the channel strip. To open pre-fader metering, all we need to do is enable this button here. If I click on it, it turns to kind of like an aqua. And you can see here that the meters have flipped sides with the fader. Watch this again. So it demonstrates to you that now the meter is metering everything before the fader and not after. If you don't see this button, just control click on the control bar here Select Customize Control Bar and Display. And then right in the Modes and Functions here, we can make pre-fader metering visible to us. Click OK, you're good to go. Okay, so from here, pre-fader metering is going to tell us how loud this track is before any fader movement. So if I play this track and I bring the fader all the way down, this meter is not going to reflect that change in volume. Watch. As you can see, even though I brought the volume all the way down so we can't hear the track anymore, the meter is still demonstrating that there is volume occurring on this track. So that includes the input, which is the drum kit designer, and the plugins after it. Let's disable the plugins for now. I'm going to enable the channel EQ, and I'm going to do nothing with this EQ. I'm just going to drive the gain up or down. So as we can see, as I adjust the output slider on the EQ, the meter now reflects that change, not the fader change. So what's the big idea? Number one, I use pre-fader metering specifically for recording. That to me is its best purpose. I wanna make sure that I'm not clipping my interfaces meters and I wanna make sure I'm not clipping on the logic meters because if you're clipping, if you're going above zero, as you can see, plus eight, Whatever I record is going to get chopped off right at zero because there is no such thing as louder than zero. It may be louder, but logic is not going to take it. It's just going to chop off whatever peaks occur above zero. And then you're going to have a track that doesn't have clarity. It sounds distorted. Just not good. That is when I use pre-fader metering and I find it very helpful. What I believe a lot of folks are suggesting for pre-fader metering is the way that you manage volume from plugin to plugin. Right, so if I boost the volume on the EQ by way too much, this meter will show me, hey, the volume on your EQ is way too loud. Here, I'll mute it so we don't get blown away here and I'll hit play. So as you can see, plus 17, plus 18, it's way too loud. And the way that we drive 
this channel EQ into the compressor is really no, no good for the compressor. It's gonna be way too loud, right? Look at that. So if I bring down the threshold and the ratio so it's not compressing at all, it's just way too loud. But take a look. We know that we boosted the gain by 24. Let me now drop this gain by about 24. And we can get rid of that. Okay, now I'm gonna reintroduce this track. It shouldn't be too loud. Okay, and it doesn't sound unreasonable or unmanageable. This is where I think the thinking of pre-fader metering helping the way that you manage volume from plugin to plugin sort of falls apart because at this point, we know that this channel EQ is way too loud. If I start compressing this track with the compressor, it's probably gonna sound a little gnarly. Let's try it out. As you can see on the meter, it's already knocking a negative 10 decibels in game reduction because there's so much volume being driven into this compressor. I don't even need much threshold for it to exceed wildly. But it's not going to reflect that on the meter here with pre-fader metering. I don't know. I mean, it's fine. Pre-fader metering, again, what I believe the suggestion is, is the way you manage volume between plugins. But the only thing it's going to tell you at the end of the day is how loud the track is after the last plugin in the channel strip. I've never found that very helpful. I personally would love for Logic to have a pre-channel strip metering because all I want to know about is when I'm recording how loud the input is because I don't want to clip my recorded track. That's about it. So personally, I just stick with regular metering. I mean, my best practice to you is anytime that you make any sort of adjustment with an EQ compressor, whatever processor, that you make sure to adjust the output. So if you turn this plug in on and off, the volume is identical. We as humans tend to perceive tracks that are louder as better, but that's very rarely the case. We want to make sure we're making educated decisions. Are these EQ curves that I've created for this track helping or hindering the track? Is this compressor at its current settings helping or hindering the track? Let's just pick a random preset here. Let's go to drums, pick a rock snare drum. Okay, let's take a listen to this track and I make sure to set the output slider. Take a listen. So this track is a little louder now and I want to compensate by adjusting the slider over here on the channel EQ. Let's take a listen. I'm going to bypass it and turn it back on. Okay, so now it's comparably the same volume, so I can make an educated decision. Does it sound good or bad? And frankly, it sounds bad. It doesn't sound good. It sounds really sharp on the top end. The low end is too bulgy now. Not good. Same thing with the compressor. Let's just pick a random preset, drums, classic drums. Okay, make sure that the output gain is the same. Same thing, let's take a listen. Okay, clearly way too loud, clearly way louder than before and after, so let's bring it down. Okay, I don't hate that. I would probably adjust the mix knob so it's not so compressed. It's like, you know, a balance between compressed and uncompressed. Okay, that might be good for a particular mix, who knows, but that's the point. My best suggestion to you is anytime you use a plugin is to adjust the output of that plugin so when you turn the plugin on and off, it's the same volume, so you're not being tricked by how loud it is or how quiet it is, just is it making a good difference or a bad difference. Same thing on the channel EQ here. So I hope that was helpful to you. If it was, as always, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel why Logic Pro Rules or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm creating new videos, new blog posts, new emails to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.